After reviewing this video, you will be able to explain the duality of light and calculate the amount of energy a given light has. Wavelength. Distance between crests. Frequency. How fast the wave oscillates. So the more the wave oscillates, the greater the frequency. Think of a slinky. So moving a slinky up and down, uh, as fast, faster you do it, the greater the frequency, the greater the wave oscillates. Amplitude the height of the wave from the middle. So as you see in the picture, the amplitude, you just took a line, went straight through the middle, and the distance from the top of the crest to the middle was your amplitude. Excited electron. An electron that has absorbed energy and has moved up an energy level. Did you know? Scientists can figure out elements in a distance galaxies based on the line spectra. Each line spectra that scientists can get is unique to a specific element. So think of it as like a fingerprint. Uh, your fingerprint is unique to you, and so a line spectra is unique to a specific element. Excited electrons. When an atom jumps from the ground state to a higher energy level, energy has to be absorbed. But when the, uh, the atom doesn't like to keep that excess energy, it's kind of unstable. So it has to release that energy. So when the atom falls from that excited state back down to the ground state, that energy has to be released. And most often it is in the form of energy that we can see or light. Excited electrons. Energy can be emitted in the form of light. Like we were talking about, each element has a unique pattern because each has a different atomic number. So in those neutral atoms, uh, because you have a unique atomic number, you have a unique number of electrons. And so they act differently. And so that's how you get and that's how you get your unique spectra pattern. So on the right is our spectra pattern, and so each element spectra is slightly different. And so because like we were saying that each one's like a fingerprint, you can actually look into space, uh, get spectra patterns of different unknowns, and compare them to known spectros, and that's how they figure out the elements that are located deep in space. Separating light. Each element gives a unique spectrum. Emitted light from the element is passed through a prism which separates the light based on wavelength. Hence, your different colors. Light. It is dual in nature. So what I mean by that is it acts like a particle and it acts like a wave. So when light travels through space, it acts like a wave and the way it travels. But when it hits matter, you know, your solids, your liquids, your gases, anything that takes up space, uh, light acts like a particle because it can be deflected. So guess what? Matter actually can do the same thing, which is crazy to think about. So here's a soccer ball for example. When the ball is moving, there actually is a wavelength that it moves. <laughs> crazy, huh? But it's just that the wavelength is so small compared to the mass that you can't see it. So as the soccer ball is moving, it really does have a wavelength to it, it's just you cannot see it because it is so small compared to the mass. Calculating energy. Uh, there's two important equations that you will need to know for this. We have lambda equal to c over nu and E equals H times nu. 
Well, lambda equals wavelength, nu equals frequency, and c is equal to the speed of light, which is a constant because we are always going to say that the speed of light is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we then have h, which is Planck's constant, which is also a constant. And so we'll always refer to that as 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And then the last one, e, which is equal to energy, which we'll always say is in joules. So my question to you, what letter do both equations have in common? That's right. For those of you that said that V looking thing, which is also known as nu, uh, nu, nu is equal to the frequency. So frequency is in the same in both equations. So it can help you when you need to convert between the two. So what is the frequency? If the wavelength of blue light is 4.75 times 10 to the minus seventh meters, what is the frequency? Well, first thing we need is the equation. So the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. So let's plug in what we know. So we have the wavelength, which is told to us in the equation. So 4.75 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Uh, speed of light is that constant, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the frequency we do not know. So again, let's plug those in. And then we solve for the frequency. So when we solve for the frequency, we will get an answer of 6.31 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Now, we'll take that calculated frequency of blue light and figure out how much energy does that contain. Well, we have to use the energy equals h, or Planck's constant, times nu, or the frequency. And so energy, we do not know. But we know h, which is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And then we know the frequency, which we just calculated as the 6.31 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So let's plug in the numbers that we know. And once we do that, we just multiply. And our energy will be equal to 4.18 times 10 to the minus 19th joules.